Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I have a returning guest. It's a person who I talked to, uh, I want to say a year ago, maybe. And they were a webcomic person that I've known on a webcomic sharing site that I use called Tapas. And uh, they had started a brand new webcomic. Uh, they had just started a new series. They didn't know what they thought of it yet and kind of like working on it. And uh, the person contacted me and said, it's been a year now that they've been doing it and I've been reading it and it's a fun, it's a fun webcomic. It's called Jump Hero. And they wanted to come on and talk more about like what the past year has been like, what they're doing. They built a brand new website for this webcomic and we got together and just got to talk about comics. And we actually have an interesting conversation about how uh, when they built their website for the webcomic, really wanted to make it so that it was also uh, user accessible for the visually impaired and, you know, making it so that it's readable because it's a web comic, it's a drawing, it's an image. And what about people that can't see the comic? It, it, which is funny because my previous job, that was what I did for a living. So I, I listened and got to hear about how they went through this whole process of learning what needed to be done, what needed to be on the website. And I, I kind of sat there and I'm like, yep, that's what you do. It's it, it, and it was it was a fun fun conversation. Plus, uh, they're also trying to get into more comic cons. Wants to create a book. Really fun conversation. I was glad that I got to connect with the person again and uh, have this conversation. So here is another episode of the podcast starting right now. <laughs> I'm Marlene, and I make web comics. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so it's been about. I want to say, has it been a year since we talked last? I can't. I it's probably been more than that. a year. It's been it's been a year and a few months. Yeah. yeah, and you had you had been starting new web comics and canceling new web comics and starting yeah. new web comics and and I I know you from the web comic site that we both share too, which is Tapas. And since then, when we last talked, you were just starting your comic Jump Hero. And, mm -hmm. and you've been doing that for a year and you wanted to come back and talk about it. So for people listening who may not have heard of Jump Hero, why don't you tell people a little bit about what this crazy comic you've been doing for a year has been all about? Oh, boy. So this comic is, it's always weird for me to explain it. It's about, um, it takes place in this world with video game logic and it's, it's very similar to that. And there's this character who, for some reason, he always has to go save this princess from being captured. But he really hates it. He really hates her. And this that's like the main premise. Um, overall, there's a lot of characters in the series. And yeah. the comic kind of goes through several like little stories, vign vignettes of... Uh, Someone, someone once described it as like vignettes. I can't pronounce it, but <laughs> uh, but like someone described it as that. Basically, it's like independent story arcs that are kind of sort of connected to like this whole pattern. And then there's like sort of hinting like the question: Why? How did this happen? Why is it happening? What's like the person who's like controlling this whole thing? Like, what's their motive for it? Yeah, and that hasn't been revealed yet, right? That's still kind no. of the ongoing story. Yeah. And right now they just uh you just did a story arc where um uh all of a sudden the names escaping me, but they were in uh, fruit something. They were fruit fruit not fruitopia. Oh, the arc is called Starfruit Island. That was it. Okay. Two main characters. So these are the two people that like go on the quest. Up top was a guy who hates this and then his friend down low. And they go and this arc was like them going on vacation. So, mm -hmm. so, um, <laughs> um, I love I that you're enjoying even getting ready to talk about it. That's the beauty of you making this comic for a year. You're enjoying yeah. it. Okay. So, so continue. It's, it's really like different than like other series I've made because this is just really chaotic and funny. Yeah. Like, um, it's, it's hard for me to understand what's going on, but when I, when other people <laughs> tell me about it, when other people tell me about it, I'm like, yeah, that's like how it is. Someone explained to me that like, you know, it feels like barely rushed, but it's like, it's fun that way yeah. because you never know what's going to happen next. Basically, they're going on vacation during a time when they're like certain that like the princess isn't going to get kidnapped uh, to like this island that's like 
it's it, the inhabitants are all like fruit animal hybrids. So they're they're all just like talking animals that also look like fruit and they can like turn into fruit. Mm -hmm. and, and um um the reason why was because I was like reusing old characters from like an older project idea that I had, but I never found like a plot for it. So I was like, oh well, I guess fruit emuls is like gonna die. Mm -hmm. And then when I came up with this idea, I was like, oh, I can just have them like go to that island. So so you know, I'm use I'm taking advantage of this like comic where anything can happen. And I'm just like putting like all of my old ideas in, so they have somewhere to live. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's that. And I, the reason why I was laughing, um, it's not even that funny. But <laughs> so it, it's not even that funny. But um, like I know in the first two pages, um, I tried to sort of have them talk and so in a way to explain to the audience that they are sort of in like a good neutral relationship with like the other bosses, you know how like in video games, usually in platformers, you have to go through like certain enemies, like mm -hmm. certain large enemies to like get to like the final boss. And so in this world, um, in this world, there's like that same system being set up in place, but also those like bosses and mid bosses, they also don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of have this mutual relationship of like, we don't want to be here, but we have to do this. And I heard their plan to like explain exactly like how they're kind of stuck in this system. But um, I guess I'll like hint sort of that, you, you know, how in real life, like, like you may not want to do something like it's your job, but due to like certain circumstances in life either like through the influence of like other people or like your situation you have to do this mm -hmm. um, and like no one's like forcing you like you have to do this you have to stay there but it's sort of that kind of psychological thing of like you have to be here so i'm just like that's just a little hint that's sort of what is going on here but i'm not gonna like get into specifics just yet about how that system happened. Well, and that's but. that's the other reason why I wanted to ask you about it, because I know uh, reading your comics, you also, kind of the way you're explaining it now, you're like, I'm not sure if it's going to do this yet or not. But, and you did this whole story arc, and now they just came back from that island in the in the most recent comic. And uh, yeah. I, they're at like a bar or something, or a oh, restaurant. Oh, they're still at the island. They're still at the Oh, they the are island. still at the island. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, like... Yeah, in the last pages, they're like at a juice bar or whatever. That's what it was. Yeah, that's it was yeah. a juice bar. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're still on the island. Like, they're still, um, you know, they talk about like leaving the island to do other things, but right. that's like later pages. But like in the most recent update, yeah, those are the. Those are the most recent pages. Well, and that's why I bring it up is because in the comments, so you'll write a comment at the bottom and kind of like the way you're describing it right now in the comment, you'll be like, oh, I did, uh, I changed this for this, or I did this for the story, or maybe this is going to happen. I'm not sure yet. You'll kind of just be like, I don't know. Here's, here's what we have for today and let's see where this goes. And it makes me wonder, like, is that just your narrative? Like you're writing it that way to go like, what's going to happen next? Or do you really not know what you're doing from, do you, do you do it and go like, oh, Maybe I'll do it this way today and see what I come up with next time. Like, how far in advance do you actually think of your storylines? I, I actually do have quite a lot of it in advance. Okay, but, you do. Um, All right. Yeah, it's like the the description that I'm writing is like, well, right now these are like um, sort of like I had to change things from like the original like story of Fruitimals that yeah. was like about just the fruit animals. And Fruitimals is your like, previous one of your previous comics. No, that well, that was an idea I had that like never I never turned it into a comic. Okay, it, all right. It was it was just like oh, what if I had like fruit animals that like lived on an island? But I didn't really have like an idea for what they would do. I just kept coming up with ideas for like different like fruit animal puns, like porcupine apple, like armadurian, like the, those characters. And I was sort of having like personalities, but I just never figured out what were they going to do. It was like something I could have them do to like move a plot along. Yeah. And then I got tired of the idea. I was like, this isn't really going anywhere. So I kind of put it in the back uh, to see if something would pop up. And then, you know, over over the years, like uh, I got other ideas and I ended up with Jump Hero and that was like its own thing. And, and then when I was like, oh, I'm going to write this arc about like them going on vacation or something, mm -hmm. I was like, I want them to go to like a place that feels different. And so I decided to use the same location from Fruit Emuls. 
And so I put it into the series, into Jump Hero. Well, and you're trying to work up to something too. Like you've yeah. actually, this is the comic where you've, you finally built a website for it. You've actually got like a Comic Fury website you're doing. You're trying to be more uh, dedicated to the schedule. So what is, what is, uh, first of all, who, uh, so you had somebody build the, the website for you and you're, and like I said, you built it on Comic Fury, which is actually a specific comic web hosting website. Like I remember it, I forgot all about it. And then I saw yours and I was like, oh yeah. So uh, first of all, how, how and when did you start setting that up? I was kind of trying to think of like, hmm, I want to do a website. I, I don't want this to just stay on tapas. I want like, yeah. I, I like webcomic websites. So I was thinking about where to go. Um, I don't know how to code. Like I, I well, at least I didn't know. I, I learned a little bit of HTML just to like. Yeah, to update and do some stuff. Right? Yeah. But yeah, at first I was like, I don't know where to go. There isn't really a. There, there's no like Wix or like something like that for a web comic so no. easily. There's, like, but you can't navigate you know, through it like you can on yeah, tablets. They're, they're yeah. not like they, they're not very web comic friendly, sort of. Um, unless you're like having a, like a non traditional style of your web comic, I'm not sure. But yeah, but usually in the ones where you like you click to read the next page or the next script, they're not very friendly for that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do it, and I was looking up options. And I was also a cheapskate, so I was like, "Oh yeah, no, you have no to be." Reason. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now I'm like, now I'm like thinking more about like, now I'm trying to let myself spend more money. But I was like, I didn't want to like, like pay for hosting or like get a free host or whatever. And and apparently, I learned that like WordPress is open source or something. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. I looked it up and I was like, "Oh, pay for WordPress or whatever." I was confused. Decided to look at Comic Fury. Because I knew that like you could customize it as much as you want. Mm -hmm. I decided to look up some of the websites that are hosted through Comic Fury, but I was—they weren't very like customized. They were mainly using like the templates. I was like wondering. Right. Like, A lot of them are like, "What? This works. It's great." <laughs> what? What's going on here? Like, why are you guys like just using the templates and not like expressing yourself? And then I made an account and I looked and I was like. Oh, it's like HTML. Yeah, like no, it's a very, HTML. yeah, there's no frills on that one. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I decided to like step back. Um, I asked some people about like, what do you do for webcomic websites? How do you make them? And like people were like reassuring me about like HTML isn't really that scary. It, most of the time you'll be copying and pasting stuff. Mm -hmm. And then as I kind of looked back and I like found um, the simple editor for Comic Fury, which is like, um basically it lets you like change like certain links and like the background you can do quite a lot with the simple editor and i oh, looked yeah. at it and i was like you know what this is like basically a simplified version of html sort of even though it's like you're clicking buttons and they're like oh what color do you want this like what this and that i i realized you know i can like try to get as far as i can with the simple editor and see how i feel mm -hmm. and i got pretty well with it and so you know, I decided to also um, go on like Code Academy and like take an intro to HTML oh, yeah. course. Like, doesn't it, hurt. It, You're learning. It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. It was. It was like kind. It's still like annoying, but it's not that difficult. And so I got pretty far, and it looked good. And and like most of what the website looks like now is like through the simple editor. And then I turned on HTML so I can like add an ad space and like do a couple extra things. Yeah. Um, and, and it came out pretty all right. You know, it's, it wasn't that bad. Mm. And, and I think I can keep managing this in HTML. Sometimes I, sometimes I do sit down and wonder like, should I have, should have I tried to like get w comic press for WordPress? Cause a lot of web comic websites, a lot of really nice polished ones use comic press. Yeah. And no, I've seen I'm, it. Yeah. It's yeah, just that it's the that. only template out there that does it. Like, why are there not more of them? The, the comic press one has been around since like 2009. I've, I were so little backstory on this where you're saying like, and I'm kind of learning the HTML. I, I became a software developer in the same way that you just now, like I created a website. I needed one for my band, like back in the day and somebody built one for me. And I'm like, well, I'm going to see how this thing works. And I went in there and I broke it constantly. And my entire process of learning how to code was trying to fix what I screwed up. 
and then figuring mm. out my mistakes. And then later on, it was like I was building more websites. And then all of a sudden I was a web developer for crying out loud. So you're wow. on the right path. Like what you're doing, like having your own site, like taking that class, you can take the class and pass it, but you don't know why you did until you actually get into your own website that nobody's going like, you have to fix this right away. You're just like going, why isn't that working and smashing on the keyboard, yeah. you know? <laughs> and that's yeah, how you learn. Thinking. Like, oh, what what else should I add? Like, you know, right now I look at my website and I'm like, it's very bare bones. Like I've seen really yeah. beautiful, really well made like web comic websites. And I'm like, what else could I add to this? Like, right. and I, I'm thinking of like taking time to like look at more like how to do this in html but mm -hmm. yeah i'm i'm like trying to do what i can with this That's, um, it's commendable like, that oh, you are i love it yeah yeah like um oh one really cool thing that i i've tried to do um and i kind of got some help on this uh someone who has like a really really nice web comic website basically what i wanted to do was i i asked myself the question how do like blind people or like visually impaired people like mm -hmm. could, how would they normally like read a comic mm -hmm. and so I kind of started asking other people online like what do you think should be done about that like do we make transcripts for them to read like with screen readers like they just use this you know how alt text works that it like mm -hmm. re uses the screen reader reads like the alt text of a picture and it mm -hmm. describes what it looks like for the for the person and so I was thinking like, hey, why can't, like, can, can something like that be made for comics? You know, they don't really have that on, I, I don't know any like comic platforms that have that. So, right. and I've never really seen it in like web comic websites, except for like one, but it didn't really seem very like screen reader friendly. Cause it mm -hmm. was like, like a script, like it had like the name of, of like the speaker and then like the text that they said, like. Like it, it was it, so basically a screen reader would like read the name and then read the dialogue, read the name and dial. It, it would it would have been weird. And I like asked some visually impaired and blind people online, like, hey, like what would be better? And they told me that it would be better to like have a more descriptive one, like mm -hmm. like a book, you know, that's like, oh, this person said this and that and this and that. And then this person did this. Mm -hmm. And so they said that that would be better. I, I, I met one person online who is like completely blind and mm -hmm. listens to comic dubs. So, you know, those dubs that like people are voice acting comics on YouTube. Oh, yeah. 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 I listen to those. So, you know, definitely there's like people who would like this kind of stuff. So I decided, OK, I'm going to like try to write a transcript. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that I can turn this into like an alt text for like every page? The thing is, so I, I was talking to the person who created the website DreamDB. Um, Cause I was like posting it on the tap of tapas forums for like help on how to do this. And this person like knows like about HTML and coding and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, they offered to help and we kind of talked about how to do it. And what's weird about alt text is that they usually have to stay short. Like if a screen reader detects, apparently if a screen reader detects alt text, mm -hmm. like it will read, but it will like read like only a certain amount of, a certain amount of words or characters. So that's why you have to keep it short, which is like the point because all text is supposed to be short and concise. It's just supposed to be a quick description of something yeah. so that the person can just read the whole page seamlessly and not get like any random, like in a, uh, like weird information. And so I was like, I knew that if I was going to transcript an entire comic page, it was being way too big. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to find a way like, oh, can we make like a pseudo alt text where like the text is like hidden. It's still there. So like the screen reader can read it. Mm -hmm. And we tried and like sometimes it came out well. But then when I like asked like screen reader users online, like how does this work? And like, by the way, I'm saying like blind and like visually impaired. I'm expanding it because like, you know, there's like, it's not just blind people, but like people who like cannot see at all, but there's like some people who can like see a little bit or mm -hmm. like, it's like a varying spectrum. Of right. That's what visually, yeah. Visually impaired. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like just expanding on that. So, you know, I asked some people online, like, Hey, does this website work? And like, it often would not work. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this this isn't really coming along. Like, I can't outsmart the screen readers to make this transcript legible. So I was thinking, okay, do I really need to hide this? Like, there's no really good reason to, like, 
hide this transcript. Nope. It does not matter if cited. That's what I was waiting to see if you got to. That's there is no reason to hide it. Yeah, absolutely yeah, not. Like, there's no reason to hide it. Like, why am I doing this? So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make the text box visible and like. I, you know, I figured out some HTML from there. It wasn't that complicated ish for, to begin with, to make it hidden. Mm -hmm. So I, all I had to do was just remove the code that was doing that. And so now it was like visible mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it worked out well and people could read it. And then I decided to like, think about like, Oh, you know, sometimes it's going to be a lot of like dial, a lot of writing and stuff. And so it might be like, awkward for like people who are cited to like scroll through all the text just to get to the comments below mm -hmm. so i was thinking hey could i like toggle the transcript so that you can press a button to yep. like close it and so i did and so i i looked up how do you make a button for like a uh, like a section or whatever you learn javascript <laughs> yeah like how, how, to, how to do that it was like javascript like i you can use javascript in comic fury it's like html oh, yeah. it's CSS and javascript and so I looked it up. It was like kind of weird because I wasn't really knowing why this. It's a whole new pressing. language. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I sort of figured it out and I like made a button and it's there on the website. Mm -hmm. And and it was like doing a weird thing where like, like sometimes you had to double click it for it to close and open or whatever. And and like. So I, I, this is the good thing about Comic Fury is that if you need help, you can just PM the the owner of like the platform. So I sent him a message oh. and he was like, oh, here's the code for like the button. Like, like, could you help me to like make it not like weird? And like he replied, <laughs> he replied and was like, oh, you need to do this. And he like, like sent an edited version of the code. And I put that into the, I put that into the, 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 the the website thing mm -hmm. and it started to work. So now it's like, it's good. And good. like, and like it, 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 you can now open and close it when you want. And I even asked like, Hey, can you like do something? So it will remember if the user closed it. Cause sometimes if you, well, right. all the time before, if you like press the button is like toggle transcript. If you press it and then you go to the next page, it'll like open again, even if you had it closed before. Right. So I asked like, hey, can you make it so that it remembers like if you want it opened or closed? So he did that. Mm -hmm. Like he sent me a piece of code to do that and it worked and I'm kind of proud of it, but also I'm very thankful for all the people who helped yeah. make that feature. I don't know if any, <laughs> if any screen reader users are reading Jump Hero or whatever, but if they ever find it's it. It's all set up. They, they, it's they set should up. Yeah. Things should always be set up that way in case it happens. So mm -hmm. this, I loved watching the journey. So this even goes back to what I was saying, like when I started and breaking things and then went into web development and all that kind of stuff, my previous job was actually doing uh, accessibility for blind and deaf people on websites. So I'm sitting there listening to you going, going, yep, nope, that's not the way. And then the way you went through it, you, you're exactly on the right path. The, yeah. it, you ever really want to, so what people mostly do is with the alt text, they will write in something so it does that thing where it shows text when you hover over it. People use it for like a trick, but that's not what it is. You want to know what alt text really is, and especially for sites that are legally meant to do it, go to Instagram sometime on the web browser, right click on an image and inspect it, um, which you probably know how to do now, now that you <laughs> do HTML, and look at the image and look at the alt text. It has an automatically AI generated one, and what it's really supposed to do is in the most bland way, describe what's it. So it'll say picture of man next to tree is what it'll yeah. say on it. Like that's, you're just supposed to describe what the image is. Or if it's a drawing illustration of dog, like that's all it's supposed to do. That's, it's supposed mm -hmm. to explain the text and then the actual uh, content itself is supposed to give you the rest of the information. And you going through that, that was beautiful. I loved it. You you went through all of the, I love that. This, this is, I don't run into a lot of people that have to deal with accessibility. And I like that you're, like going straight into it and wanting to have it so that it's there. So that's really cool. I, I, I enjoyed that story. That was fun. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Yeah, like I would like um, readers, like people who use screen readers to like actually like read it so that they can tell me like, are my descriptions like good enough? Like, Have, have you like, installed a screen reader on your browser? Have you tried it uh, out? In, like, have like, you installed yeah. your own? Yeah, I installed one to like test it out and it's yeah. working, but it works well. But I mean, like, like but you someone don't know who's the experience. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like someone who like lives through that their entire life, like 
barely or not being able to see at all. Like, mm -hmm. like I want to know, is this like sufficient enough? Did I write it well? Because like, you know, I, I can like look over it, but I'm like, I'm, I'm going to always have like a bias. So, you know, I, I did like go to like a discord server that was like, with a, like it had like a community of blind people and visually impaired people. And, and I did like show them the comic and they were like, Oh, the descriptions are nice, but I don't know if they're still reading it. Right. <laughs> So I'm like, and but, like the comic, you know, is yeah. updating. But you what? know that it's, you know <laughs> that it's supposed to be okay. You, you, they're telling you it's okay. And also you, you just made me realize something too. So you started your own discord server when we spoke last too. Like, how's your discord server been going? Tell me about what um, you do there. So mine is pretty small, but it's pretty nice. I do post um, like updates for when there's a new episode, like, um, in Discord, you can have diff people, you can give people different roles or they can give e themselves roles for mm -hmm. if they want like a notification for something. So I have one specific role for notifications for new episodes. And I, and every time there's a new one that goes up, I plan to like, I'll, I just ping the role and like I have the link. And then people actually use that to remember to read like, like there's like one user who like every time I post the link and like I have the, I, I ping the role like like within a couple seconds like i'll i'll get the notification that they like the episode yeah at the moment i think the total amount of pages i've drawn is like 72 or something like there's like a lot of pages right now okay and technically for a comic that's not that much because if you go to like a library or a bookstore and like you get a graphic novel like like they're going to be, you're going to get like stuff that's like a hundred, 200 pages and like they look big, but because it's a comic, you can read it quickly mm -hmm. because you're like looking at every page, like for a few seconds, because right. of how fast they go. But it's like, you know, that, that's, that's still a lot of updates. So I've been like making the website update every day, one page of the series. Yeah. And, and so, cause also on comic fury on the comic fury website, like every time you update this, it'll your your series will show up on the front page. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do that. You know, take advantage of that of like just have one page every day. Yeah. But it's sort of doing that until it catches up to where it's on tapas. Mm -hmm. And on tapas, um, it's it's approaching really quickly. I think on like March tenth, I think is like the day that the end the day that the website and. And the Tapas um, series will like meet up. <laughs> okay, and that's including the ones that you're currently drawing. Yeah, that's okay. like the so on the set schedule, like it'll still catch up. Okay, yeah, that's that's on the day that they will like have the same. That's on the day that they will release at the same time. Okay, um, and and on that day, I plan to just from now on kind of push the website more. Mm -hmm. because for tapas and like other webcomic platforms um they're good for people who have accounts on those sites though i think the discord server also encourages them to be there because it reminds them that the comic exists yeah and like you know when i was first discovering web comics i read on tapas without an account and then i made one so you know it's possible to get some readers like that but it's made mostly for people who have like accounts like normally you will get people like that and so on a website however you can get anyone because it's a website and yeah. um the one issue is that like um for notifications it might be a bit tough um but you know if people just learn to use rss feeds because they're like they've been out of fashion but in my opinion they're really great for web comics they're very good and it really does suck because they're they're being more and more taken away like the, like more and more rss based things are closing down they they don't yeah. use them anymore yeah it's it's and it's all because of social media because everybody's like well people just post the updates to social media so people don't need an rss feed anymore and it's like well yeah, you can't test anything or you can't read like 20 of them in a row like you used to be able to anyway sorry yeah. mini rant there <laughs> yeah, it, it's like fair. Like RSS feeds, like you can actually control the sort of notifications you get right. because social media will always push something else in oh, the yeah. middle of the thing yeah, yeah. you want. And sometimes the things that you are subscribing to or following, like they won't share it because they just don't think it's like popular enough for you to show right. you. It's 
it's an annoying algorithm. And I like the idea with an RSS feed, you can just like put whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And so when I like decided to learn more about RSS feeds and how to use them, and I realized like, oh, these are really great for like keeping up with web comic websites. So I got a browser extension um, that like, a, like pretty much you can get like a feed reader like through a browser extension or like I think there's mobile apps for that, whatever, just download something that can like read RSS feeds. Yeah. So I have a browser extension that does that. And whenever there's a comic on a website, on like an independent website that I want to read, I'll just like follow the RSS feed with it. Right. And, you know, it, it's like, it's a great thing to use. So I hope more people use that. Comic Fury itself has a subscribing system that if you have a Comic Fury account, you can subscribe to right. series and get notifications through there. Um, and I but do that's have again one. going to a place to check it out instead of it just yeah. coming to you. Yeah. Yeah, what's good is that like Comic Fury is like not a business or anything, so they're not trying to spam you with other things. It's like completely free and like funded by Patreon. Right. Like, but I, I get the idea that you have to go through something to read it. Yeah. Yeah, like it's nice how like Tapas Comic Fury they let you like track how many subscribers you have through that. Right. RSS feeds you can't do that, but it's fine, you know. Well, I'm. And yeah. that being said, I mean, here's a question for you. Like what, so you've been doing this, you've been building your website, you've been really just kind of, you know, setting up the feeds, talking about subscribers. What, so what is your goal? What do you want to do with the comic? What is your outcome that you want to have happen with the comic? Like where, you know, what would you like it to be? I sort of just want to make this the best thing I can do. I have an end goal for the series. Like I have, I have an ending point for the series. It's going to take a long time to get there. I wrote this as like a long story idea and I have like several like story plots in between, but it's, it still has an ending to the story where like okay. basically all the answers are revealed and I want to get there. And that's like the big thing is like, I want to finish the story, but then there's also like, I want a lot of people to be able to read it. I want people to like experience it with me because I work so hard on this. Like, yeah. I don't have to be like famous, but I would like people to be able to read it. I guess in general, I want to like just do the best I can. I want to try to print this. Oh, you do? Like, yes. Okay. I would like to print it um, because it's like going to be a, a long thing. I assume I'm going to print it in volumes or whatever. Um, so I'm like trying to like think about it. I'm even starting to like switch my thought process on like my workflow to like, instead of focusing on it as a web comic, I focus on it as a print comic. Yeah, Cause I was going to say as a print one, you do a really long, like it's, it's a tall comic. And so that's not really printer friendly. Well, yeah. Well, well, sort of. Or the do you do I it do in several pages and put them on top of each other? Yeah, I do several okay. pages and put them on top of each other. And like, you're, you're not the first one that like said, oh, it looks like a scroll, like long form. Gotcha. Like okay. scrolling web comic. Like someone else has also commented and they, they thought it looked like that. And I, it's good that like you can see it as that because that means it's mobile friendly. Yeah. Um, yeah. People, most people who are on Tapas, they read it on the app. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Um it's good, but yeah, it is. It's actually made of several pages that are stacked on top of each other on Tapas, on Comic Fury, on the website. They're just posted individually mm -hmm. because it looks better that way. And and so I, you know, I originally when I was starting the pages, I was like, okay, I'm gonna look at like, you know, how on like so drawing software is they like have templates for like comics. Right. So yeah. I was kind of looking at that and I was like looking up settings for like how to make it printer friendly just in case I get around to doing that. Yeah. So the pages are pretty much printer friendly right now. Uh, I did learn that I have to manually put in page numbers myself. So I will need to eventually go back and add page numbers to every one of my pages. Where are you looking to print it at? Uh, I'm thinking about it. I know I'm going to do self-publishing first. Mm -hmm. cause like, so I talked to a professional who like does this as her job. And I've been, I've been talking to her about it and like what she does. And she said that she started off with self-publishing mm -hmm. and like, because like publishers, independent indie publishers will like indie publishers, by the way, are the ones that like, they don't take your rights for the series. They just like have, they just want like rights to like market like the stuff and like, they'll, mm -hmm. like do that. 
and so like they usually want like people that like have like have sort of like a history with like comics and like have been doing this for a while so like they want people with followers (laughs) well not just fault not just followers but like i assume people who have like got into printing comics before right. making simple comics. And like, this is like my first like big series of like, I'm going to make this look polished yeah. and make it pretty and all that stuff. And um, she d- basically what I'm saying is she recommended I try self publishing mm-hmm. to start off. So I'm looking, um, I know in your podcast, you're talking about how you went with Amazon KDP. Yeah. So I'm thinking about like, Oh, should I try print on demand or like, there's also just some manufacturers that like you order the books yourself and right. like they ship them to your house, but then you have to ship them to everybody else right. that wants a book. Yeah. That's why um, I do print on demand. Cause I'm just like, I'm not there yeah. yet. So I'm like, if somebody wants to yeah. buy it, they can print it and ship it for me. There you go. Yeah. Like, I think <laughs> I might do that. Cause it's, and like, it's no I, reason not to try it. Like you can do that and then create another, create the same thing somewhere else. Like you can mm-hmm. do what you want with it. It's your book. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm just thinking if I do print on demand, like I can, like I, I can resell the books. I was like wondering, can I resell them? Can I like mm-hmm. buy them and like sell them at cons? Yep. And like I looked it up, and like apparently I can resell them. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I can try that. And you can buy them at cost too, so you can get them for the price of just the printing cost. So say the yeah. book only costs four dollars and eighty cents to to create, you can buy author copies of it, and you can order up to nine hundred of them at one sitting. You, you know, you can have them delivered to you. And there you only pay for the cost of the printing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done. Yeah. Like I'll order, like when I used to do pop-ups and events like that, I would just go and order like 20 books. Of course you have to make sure you order them in advance because they send them to you when they damn well feel like it. I'll tell you that much. Uh, It it takes about two weeks to get them. So, uh, but, but no, yeah, you can order them yourself and sell them when you want, or you can even just keep them around, sell them on your online store. And again, there's no reason not to And while you're still looking, you can have that there. And then the friend who's telling you like what they use or what they think you should set up with, or if you actually want to go through a publisher, then you do that. I mean, it's no reason not to do all of them. <laughs> it's your, yeah, it's your like, comic for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I'm looking at what I can do. So the reason why I was like, I was trying to think like, sort of different ways I can express myself with the comic. And, hmm. and I know that because I'm doing a page, format that is meant for print i'm thinking would it be better if i think of this as a print book would it look nicer if i thought of it as a print book as Mm. opposed to a web comic yeah because i'm like doing it in the format that it's meant to be like like i'm also thinking like it might be more worth it to like focus on print because if it looks nice on print and I sell a book, I, I would make more money off books than like it just being on the web right because you have to like you know, I have to rely on like small bits of ad revenue, you know? Right. So, so In, instead so. of a little bit larger bits of, of royalty share yeah. <laughs> for books, but it's, but it is better it, when you get yeah. it, but yeah. you do, you do have a pretty consistent following though, too. And actually a very interactive mm-hmm. crowd. Uh, you interact with your, or at least from what I've seen, you interact with people on your comics all the time, which I, I wish I had that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. This series has gotten a really great following. Yeah. Let me tell you, because I, I'm almost surprised myself at how many people like this because, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it, it reminds me that like, wow, that everybody is actually a gamer out there. Right. <laughs> but no, like a lot of people really like it. And I think like a major thing that helped me like get a lot of like, a big spike in my growth was um, when Tapas, they featured the comic. They had a collection for Hispanic Heritage Month in 2021, and they put my comic in it Uh um, because, as you can tell, you know, if if you don't know, I'm with my last name. I am Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Uh, My my family, my ethnicity is Dominican. So, yeah. Um, So it was we were doing that. And, and they put it in the, in the collection and naturally you would assume like, you know, in this collection, it's going to be on the front page. Everybody is, everybody's like going to see it and they're going to read it. Of course, like naturally you'll have a big spike, but what was really interesting was that, um, I believe in the year prior to that, I forgot which one, but it was one of the four friendly humors comics that I did. Like they put one of them in like the same collection for like that year and it got a pretty big growth it was like i forgot what was what the number was originally but it jumped to like 
70 something subscribers which is pretty great but then when jump hero got into the collection yeah it grew like i got 300 new subscribers nice in that month and oh. it, was, it was insane i was so surprised that's cool though people, like it started off with like before the collection it was like at 70 something i was like oh i can't wait to get to 100 and then within a couple weeks it makes it to like 370 something right now it's at 398 like it was at 400 for a while but then it kind of like dipped up and it went up and down because like um you know like after after the month ended it was like uh november december and like kind of activity sort of goes down on tap right. during that time because everybody's like going on for holidays not really reading comics so it's the same with anything. It's just like people signing up for your email list and then they'll be like, why did I sign up for this? You know, yeah, it's, yeah, that. it's, no, but that's, like, that's overall, just nature. Overall, the growth is like, it, it like, it, you'll get a net growth. And this was like way more than I expected. Like this, this comic is only at this point because this month is February. It came out in, in May. I have readers on like, the website on Comic Fury, so like that adds on. So I have most likely more than four hundred people reading this comic right now. Well, and like it's only been all it's been less than a year. Yeah, so I'm very I'm very excited that very a lot of people like this majority and majority of the time if I like show it to someone they will like it. They oh, may yeah. not like no keep I like reading it. It, like you know not everyone's going to be like reading comics, but there is a positive reception to this. Okay. And, it's really surprising. I really like it. Well, and let me ask you one more thing. Now that you've been doing this for nine months, what are your plans, like, let's say in the next year? Now that you've actually been sticking with an a webcomic idea and haven't gotten bored with it, what yeah. what can people what can people expect from, or what, what do you want people to know that you're going to be doing within the next year or to expect? Something that interests me, which you said that, like, I haven't gotten bored with it yet. And that's, yeah. that's so true. Like, I... I am surprised at how not bored I've been with this series. And I think it's because, um, so the format of the series is like, it's little like semi, um, semi serialized story arcs. Sometimes mm -hmm. I call them chapters, but because they're like not very serialized, they're not very connected to each other. I have a, a very oddly like strict schedule, strict like workflow with this comic. Um, which like most comic, well, at least many comic creators that I've talked to have like a more freer system. But I, like the way I work, I just need this. I first start off with an idea and I kind of like mull over that idea of what the story is going to be about. I like jot it down on like a list of other ideas. And then when it's time to like work on, when, it's, when it gets to a point in the story to like talk about a certain idea, I'll start scripting it. And then I, I do thumbnail sketches so I know what all the pages look like first. And then I draw like each page. I do one page and I do the next page. And then like they go off. So it's like that whole system. And it's like because of all the work that goes into each individual story, it almost feels like I like completed a, a series mm -hmm. by just making each of these stories. So I think that's helped me to not get bored with it. Oh, yeah. It. So, so I'm going to... I'm going to focus back on what you asked about, about what I plan to do in the future. So yeah. I plan to do more of these stories. I plan to, to keep like looking at readership and seeing what they say and like, Oh, that's what a good idea. Want more in the series, because that's usually how I decide what story happens next. I think about like, Oh, was there something that like people have been waiting to talk about or waiting to see? So I include that. And I plan to keep doing that. I plan to keep experimenting more of how to make a comic. I'm looking into like unique like ways of panel composition and stuff. I have like a group of people right now that I talk about making web comics with. Oh, and that's they're good. really cool. And and they they really like helped me with this and they've inspired me in ways to like make this series. Mm -hmm. Um I plan to just like just do stuff figure out what else I'm going to make, like sell merchandise if I can. I just, I just plan to grow this and do as much as I can with the series while it's still around. That's great. I'm just really happy that, uh, cause before that was the thing is it was like, you'd finish one comic and then you did another, which I thought was great. I loved that you did that, but you've really been sticking with this and it seems like you're really enjoying the story. So I think that all makes 
total sense. And and also, I, I want to thank you so much for contacting me again and asking to be on the show. I was really happy that you contacted me. I was like, I, I totally want to know where you're going at with the comic these days. Yeah. So thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, no problem. Thank you.